Hey Bulls fans, Adam Harry back again with another Bulls unboxing. Today I have a special pair for you today. It is Happy Star Wars Rebels Day. We have both of the ships, actually three of the ships, from the hit TV show Star Wars Rebels. We have the Ghost expansion for Star Wars X-Wing. We have the Inquisitor's tie for Star Wars X-Wing. Who's pumped about this one? I am super stoked. Uh, if you haven't seen Star Wars Rebels, you're missing out. It's a really fun show. It's not just for kids. Uh, go check it out. Plug, plug. Enough of that. But, uh, <laughs> man, I'm really pumped. This is the Ghost, which is a massive ship uh, for a large base ship. This thing is huge. It also comes with the uh, shuttle and then the Inquisitor's tie. Super pumped about that one. So let's go ahead and open these bad boys up. Okay, cutting and slicing is done. Pretty pumped. We've got the giant Ghost. We've got the Inquisitor's tie. I'm going to actually start with the Inquisitor's tie. Only because I feel like I haven't given you Imperial players enough love lately. So this is for me to you. I'm going to start with the Inquisitor's tie. Uh, let's do this. So let me move the ghost. We'll come back to the ghost because it's awesome. So let's open this bad boy up. Of course, from Star Wars Rebels. Pretty cool show. And a really cool tie. This is basically the prototype to the advanced TIE Fighter. If you didn't know that. Um, it kind of looks like that. So let me pull this out. Quick. We've got it's a small base ship, and we've got the little dial thing, and more plastic stuff that'll get tossed, and then the Inquisitor shuttle. We'll take a closer look at that here in a moment. And real quick, if you didn't know, that's what the uh, the dial looks like. So check that out. And here's all the card stuff. Before we open that up, I do want to take a close look at the Inquisitor's tie. It looks small, right? It's because I'm so far out. <laughs> it's actually a really cool looking ship. Uh, I love the paint, the detail on this bad boy. As you can see here, it's got the inside, kind of the solar panels on the inside versus the outside. Um, it's more armored, basically. So, I mean, you can see all the crazy detail in there from FFG. They did a great job with this ship. I think just in general with the whole line, they just look really good. Uh, you can see there, tons of little detail work. The lining work is just really top notch. I wish I could paint that well <laughs> sometimes. Uh, they did a really good job. So very cool. And then there's the front, there's the back. Very cool ship. Very unique design. Uh, it's not quite curved as a, as a angled, I'd say, as a TIE Advanced. You can see the wings. They are curved, but they're not quite as curved as the TIE Advanced. So pretty cool ship. I like it a lot. Let's go take a look at those cards, huh? All right, folks, there you have it. There's everything as far as the cards and, and stuff in these expansion packs, pretty cool stuff. Uh, up in the top right, you can see that's the dials. And actually, let me flip that over so you can see uh, the dial while we're talking about this and just see how agile and nimble this bad boy is. He's got all the maneuvers ever. He's got a five ahead straight, super fast ship. Very cool stuff. There's the card cutouts for the, the base and stuff like that. Um, real quick, I'm gonna run through the cards since there's only five real fast and we'll talk about the ships. But first off, upgrades. We've got Deadeye, which we've seen before. Homing Missiles, which is pretty nice. It's four die attack, range two, three. You do spend your target lock, but the defender cannot spend evade tokens during this attack. It only defense dice, uh, which is pretty cool. <laughs> You're coming to get them. And then we have the uh, the Tracers, which is a, a three attack, one to three. It's a focus ability. Discard this card to perform the attack, just like all other missile cards. If the attack hits, each friendly ship at range one to two may, may acquire a target lock on the defender, then cancel all die results. So, pretty cool stuff there. Um, moving on, we have Guidance Chips, which we've seen in earlier, uh, the Scum and Villainy Day. If you remember, we talked a lot about Guidance chips. chips. It's a great ability, great card. It really helps out with ships in general <laughs> that have missile slots. If you felt like missiles were underpowered before, Go check out Guidance Chips. It's a great modification to take uh, for those ships. It really turns them into great gunboats. So I'm not going to dwell on that anymore. Before I get to the title card, let me talk about the other ships. First off, uh, let's start from the lowest pilot skill on up. We have a level 2 uh, center test pilot, which is, again, the TIE Advanced Prototype is the actual name of the ship. So, like I said, this is the TIE Advanced Prototype, not just the Inquisitor ship. Uh, so, 2, he's a 2, then a 4. Of with the Baron of the Empire in the TIE Advanced Prototype. Uh, Valen Rudor is in the Pilot Skill 6 version, and then the Inquisitor is in the Pilot Skill 8 version. So, very good spread, very even numbers. 
So really cool stuff there. Stat wise, looking at the cards, we've got uh, two attack, three evade, so very squirrely, uh, two defense, sorry, two hull and two shields. So not, it's a little bit beefier than a standard tie for sure. Um, but with those three evade dice, you're really just counting on not being hit and uh, you know being a good arc dodger because you have some really great maneuverable stuff in your action bar. You've got boost, barrel roll, target lock, and focus. So, uh, which strangely enough, you don't have an evade. So keep that in mind as an action, but you do have boost barrel roll, so you can be very, very arc dodgy. Uh, upgrade slots, there's not a ton of them. You have a missile slot and an EPT for three of the ships, but the other one's just a missile slot, so not a ton of stuff. However, let's take a look at the title card and see if that'll help us out at all. Uh, the TIE V1, let's see, for the advanced prototype. After you acquire a target lock, you may perform a free evade action. Oh, it's starting to make sense now. <laughs> let's look at the abilities and see how that combos together. Let's start with Valen because these two bad boys right here don't actually have any abilities. It's just flavor text, which is good to read, but not going to help you out in the game. Uh, right here for Valen, he has, after, def after defending, you may perform a free action, like a boost barrel roll. So pretty cool there. And for the Inquisitor, when attacking with your primary weapon at range 2 to 3, treat the range of the attack as range 1. Congratulations, you're firing three dice pretty much all the time, <laughs> which is pretty sweet. Uh, and they don't get their, if you treat the attack, I guess that's a good question. If you treat the range of the attack as range 1, does that affect your, the defender's ability to get the extra evade die at range 3? Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll probably check the FAQ later after reading the video. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> so how can, that, how can that all work together? So with missiles or the ability, you're going to target lock quite a bit with this bad boy. You're going to want to target lock to get that free evade action. The evade, of course, gets you that token, makes you even harder to hit. So while he doesn't have an innate evade, you don't have to spend an action to get the evade. So it's kind of a cool thing. You get the target lock. Again, target lock's 360, so you can pretty much, if you're in range three of somebody, you're gonna get an evade. And being very arc dodgy with a boost or barrel option, uh, you, you may not want to get the target lock. It's just gonna depend. It's very situational. Mo like most of the uh, squishier Imperial not pilots, you're gonna want to uh, be very nimble and be very tricksy to get to. So. Uh, he's going to take some good player skill, not just pilot skill, but actual player skill to, to get the most out of this ship. I think it's a cool ship. Uh, points wise, he's a little bit more expensive than a standard, oh, he's a lot more expensive than a standard tie, <laughs> but uh, he's got some cool abilities. So, especially that one, just, just constantly rolling three dice um, and, and plunk it away if you have somebody in range is just going to be really good. And on top of that, boosting or barrel rolling to get you in that prime position. I mean, you are a pilot skill eight, so. More than likely, mo versus the majority of the field, you're going to be going, you're going to move second, so you're going to have to plan your action a little bit better, and you're going to get to shoot them first, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and then, of course, since you're throwing out all those target locks, you should take some really good missiles. Homing missiles, that's a great one. Um, there's tons of missile options. Go check them out. I'm not going to go through all of those, but it's a good way to get missiles <clears throat> pumping out there. So, And then that also opens up a ton of elite pilot talent options um, and you don't it doesn't take a modification slot either so there's tons of ways you can make them a little tankier with extra shield extra hull uh, you've already got a boost barrel roll, so no need to take a uh, engine upgrade but um, yeah you've got some options there with that elite pilot talent so go check that out I, I think the Baron is actually in a pretty sweet spot with a pilot skill 4 with an elite pilot talent and a missile option uh, just as far as points wise, you can get some pretty dirty efficiencies out of that. Moving on. So that is the end of the, uh, the Imperial part of this review. If, if you want to keep watching, uh, we're going to hop over and take a look at the ghost expansion, which is that big old box. I'm pretty pumped about that one. So let me clear this off and we'll take a look at the ghost. All right, Star Wars Rebels fans, let's do this. Anybody else, anybody else excited about this one? I know I am. I mean, this, this, this box in particular, first off, that ship is massive. It's almost big enough to be, uh, in uh, like Armada as far as like the size of the thing. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Oh man, pop this bad boy out. Come on! All right, there we go. Toss that to the side. Really awesome ship. Real quick too, rest of the box. I just want to play with the ships. I just want to fly around and make pew pew noises. 
and then people would be like, Adam, what are you doing in there? I'm like, making pee pew. Okay. There's all the tiles and stuff. Whoa. This is a large ship, despite what you may think. Uh, it's a big old ship on a large ship, on a large base. But uh, very cool. I mean, it's almost like it should be for epic play, but it's not. It's it's a large ship. So there's the uh, rule, uh, little new rules, stuff like that. Uh, firing arc, just gonna talk about that. This does have a weird firing arc with the front and rear, so pretty pretty weird stuff there. And then deploying the shuttle, stuff like that. Has its own special mission, sabotage. There's the maneuver dials. So you have the attack shuttle and then the uh, the ghost or the VCX100 maneuver dial. So you can see there. Um, he actually has a 5K turn, so I wanna call that out. Pretty crazy, pretty fast. And the attack shuttle has a four, uh, goes up to four at 4K turn, so cool stuff. That's the component list. All right, move that to the side. Um, let's pop the ships out real quick. Make horrible plastic sounding noise. Just cover your ears, folks. Boom, there's the ghost and the attack shuttle. Boom, glad I didn't break those off. That would have been really embarrassing. Boom, toss that to the side. All right. Okay. <laughs> really like this ship. Let me zoom in, get a better view. Man, <laughs> I just don't know what to say about the ship. It just looks really cool. It's got a very unique paint scheme. It's brighter colors. It is a, a rebel, not an imperial. So no imperial gray here. It does kind of have the scum and the villainy vibe with though, to be honest with like the crazy color pattern and the, the battle damage and wear and tear. But let's take a look at this ship. I'm gonna move the attack shuttle to the back for now. Um, but let's take a closer look. You can see here, it just looks really cool. That's the attack shuttle right there. It actually flies out. Um, later on, but we'll get to that's why it has the rear attack, but whatever. There's the front of the ship. You can see I love the line detail. Every single one of these ships from FFG is just getting better and better with the line work, line detail on all these ships. Uh, this ship looks like a kite in some ways, like a flying kite, but it's cool. I like it. I like the I like the design. I like the kind of it's a transport shuttle. It's not really a fighting ship, but it's been upgraded, you know, a few modifications. It's not the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy, but it's definitely up there. <laughs> but it's such a cool looking ship. Again, the attack shuttle's in the back uh, for the fire arc there. There's the back. I love the engine detail and stuff like this. It's just a really cool model. If you're a fan of the show Rebels, um, this would be a great gift just, just to have. I mean, who wouldn't want to play some pew 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 pew? I'm just saying. It'd be fun to play with. And then the attack shuttle. Again, very cool looking little guy. This bad boy gets lots of action on the show. <laughs> Flying around from planet to planet. There's no teleporters in Star Wars, so they have to fly a shuttle around. Shoo! So I'm seriously gonna go make pew pew noises later. So this is just good stuff. So front of the ship, back of the ship, top of the ship, bottom of the ship. Great line work. Awesome job from Effigy. Like I said, these models just keep getting better and better for Star Wars. Okay, let's take a look at the cards. I'm actually gonna do this a little bit differently. There are so many cards that I'm not able to actually fit all these in a nice clean manner. So I'm gonna focus on the uh, punch outs first and then we'll flip over and take a look at the cards next. So this is a two ship expansion. You have the attack shuttle and the, the ghost. So it's the ghost and the phantom. Um, you can see what they did there with the names. But you have the, the punch outs here for each card with the different pilots and everything like that. You've got a Connor net upgrade, you've got shields, you've got these weird tokens, which I'm not 100% sure what they are. You've got mines, cluster mines, which is pretty cool. Thermal detonator. Um, here's the dial, we'll flip those over so you can see. This one's the, uh, the ghost, this one's the phantom. So you can tell from the maneuver dials, there's the phantom with its 5K, or sorry, the ghost with its 5K turn. It's a big ship with a big flip around. That's, that's pretty cool. Especially since it can shoot from the rear, but we'll get into that. <laughs> so that's what those punch outs look like. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much more time on these, so let's take a look at the cards now. We'll focus on the ship cards first and then the upgrade cards after. All right, there are lots of cards to go over here. We're gonna focus on the Ghost first, which is the top row. So as you see here, we've got Hera, which is a seven pod skill. We've got Kanan, which is a five, uh, Chopper, which is a four, and we've got three with the uh, Lothal, Lothal Rebel, excuse me for the VCX-100. So that's just the generic pilot and then the three different unique pilots. Uh, this ship, stat-wise, is pretty beefy. <laughs> it's got a four attack primary. We haven't seen one of those in the game that I can think of off the top of my head. I don't think there's a four attack primary, but this one definitely has it. 
It is a slow boat though. It is not very agile, it has a zero agility. So if you're gonna shoot this thing, you're probably gonna hit it, it's probably gonna sting. We have some solutions for that though. It's got 10 hull. That is one of the solutions. Like I said, this thing's a whale. It's just not gonna, not gonna go away anytime soon. And it has six shields. Again, lots of shields, very cool, uh, very beefy. That's 16 total hit points you're gonna have to take off this bad boy. Now, action bar wise, it's got uh, an evade, which is interesting because it's so beefy, a target lock, and a focus. So there you go. You don't have a boost barrel, um, and we'll take a look at the, uh, the upgrade bar here too. Across the board, looks like they're all the same. So you're gonna have the option to take two passengers, which I believe is a first for the Rebels, uh, two torpedo slots, a turret slot, I believe that's a turret slot, yeah, and a sensor slot. So you can do some pretty crazy things, especially when you start um, doing things with different passengers and just make them make the ship really hard to kill with different passengers. There's lots of options in there. Um, free focus options from Kyle Katarn to just silly stuff you can do. Putting Dash Rendar in the ship would be really funny too, simply because you can ignore obstacles and then a 5K turn obstacle, anyway. <laughs> and then boost with a, slap a engine upgrade on him, let him boost out of it, whatever. Lots of cool stuff you can do. <laughs> um, let's talk about uh, pilot talents real fast. Hera over here. Uh, when you reveal a red, a green or red maneuver, you may rotate your dial to another maneuver of the same difficulty. So that's pretty cool. And that says a green or red, so you can flip it. So keep that in mind. Kanan, what he does, when an enemy ship is at range one or two, is attacking, you may spend a focus token. If you do, the attacker rolls one fewer attack die. So if you have a focus on him, you can force your opponent to roll less attack dice. Like I said, there are some tricks to help him take less damage uh, because you have that zero <laughs> agility roll. Chopper is another pilot right here. At the start of your combat phase, each enemy ship you are touching receives one stress token. So if you like bumping people, Chopper's a really good option. Um, let's drop down to the attack shuttle, the Phantom. So if Hera is flying the Phantom right here, when uh, real quick, the stat-wise, 7, 5, uh, Sabine is in, in the attack shuttle, she's a 5. Ezra, he's a 4, and Zeb is a 3. So check that out. They can all fly the, the, the shuttle. They're all also passengers, which we'll get to in a second. But uh, Hera, real fast. Uh, sorry, she goes stats. 3 attack primary, pretty awesome. Uh, 2 evade and two shields and hull. So it's very similar to the uh, Imperial Inquisitor that we just saw, but with an extra attack die versus the defend die. So you can see that kind of parallel going on with the, the Rebels crew, the Rebels show. <laughs> so it's pretty cool stuff. Um, evade wise, or sorry, action bar wise, we're gonna get an evade, a barrel, and a focus across the board. And then upgrade wise, these bad boys all have elite pilot talents. Sorry Zeb, you are not that elite as far as piloting. But you still get a passenger, which is a crew slot, uh, a turret, and the elite pilot talent. So they have some really cool options that you can do some fun stuff with. And uh, for three primary attack, points-wise, it, it lines up very well. Uh, so watch out for that. Man, so really if you took the Ghost and the Phantom, you're already sitting... <laughs> these are almost 40 points a pop. These are a little over 20. So you're already sit, sitting at a 60-point fleet out of 100 points before upgrades. So. It's kind of a cool combo, but man, that's that's still pricey. Maybe we'll start playing 150 point games. I don't know. But uh, going through the pilot abilities, they each one of them actually has a pilot ability, which is really cool. Then again, they're all elite pilots. So Hera, when she's in the shuttle, uh, when you reveal a red or green maneuver, you may rotate your dial to another maneuver of the same difficulty. So they are the exact same. Uh, Sabine, immediately uh, before you reveal your maneuver, you may perform a free boost or barrel roll action. Ha, huh, so now she's getting a boost which is not on her action bar, by the way. A free boost or barrel roll action, uh, pretty cool stuff, before you flip your card over, so or your, your dial over. Ezra, also very cool. Uh, when defending, if you are stressed, you may change two up to two of your focus results to an evade result. So, stress doesn't affect Ezra. He, he's, a, he's a carefree kind of guy. Whatever. <laughs> Zeb, uh, when defending, you may cancel a crit uh, you can cancel crit results before hit results. So he's got that unique ability where 
Uh, if you get a lot of crits on him once his shield's dead, I mean, he's, he's only got two hulls, so maybe it's not that big a deal, but it's kind of a cool thing. He can cancel it out. Uh, so that's the ships. Let's take a look at the cards and see uh, how they all combo together. Okay, here are all the cards that come with, as far as upgrade cards that come with the Ghost Expansion Pack. Ton of cards. The top row is going to be your kind of your weapons upgrades. We have Advanced Torpedoes, Proton Torpedoes we've seen before. Dorsal, uh, dorsal Turret, which is new. Show this one off. Uh, which is a two attack. Uh, attack one ship, even outside your firing arc, because it is a turret 360. It's range one to two. If the a target of this attack is at range one, roll one additional attack die. So you actually get that bonus die uh, for uh, firing close, which is cool. Connor Net, which you've seen before. Cluster Mines. I don't believe we've seen Thermal Detonators before, but it's pretty much a grenade. Uh, when you reveal your maneuver dial, you may discard this card to drop one Thermal Detonator token. This token detonates at the end of the activation phase. Ah, so it goes off a little bit sooner than you would expect, because <laughs> I'm holding a thermal detonator. Here are the two uh, title cards, which I'll show these off real fast. We have the Ghost and the Phantom. Basically, this says if you uh, put this on here, equip the Phantom title card to a day in the attack shuttle and dock it to the ship. After you execute a maneuver, you can deploy it from your rear guides. So that's how that works with the Ghost. The Phantom card is pretty cool. Uh, while you are docked, uh, the ghost can perform primary weapon attacks from its special firing arc, and at the end of the combat phase, it may perform an additional attack uh, with an equipped turret. If it performs this attack, it cannot attack again this round. So, while this ship is docked, it can fire out of the rear. So, that's pretty cool. If I'm reading that correctly, and I believe I am. Uh, you also get Predator as an upgrade card, uh, Elite Pilot Talent. We've seen that one before. Really good card, but just in general. Um... This is the card that most intrigues me out of the set simply because it's it's something for large ships only with sensors. Uh, you can see here the reinforced deflectors, large ship only. After you suffer three or more damage from an attack, recover one shield. So remember that, that fat 10 hull that you have flying around with this bad boy? <laughs> if you take three damage, you actually get a shield back. So for some reason, taking damage helps you recover shields. <laughs> and then we have all the passengers. And I feel like these passengers I'm actually going to zoom in because there's so many of them real quick. Uh, these passengers are going to change the game up just in general. I think you're going to see uh, these guys on lots of different ships. I know for me, Hera is looking really cool for some of the other um, ship combos that I run. So, Especially like in a B-Wing or something like that. Anyway, let me get to, get, to, get to these cards real quick. We have Chopper. Chopper's pretty cool. Uh, you may perform actions even while you're stressed. So take that stress bots. However, after you, perform, after you perform an action while you are stressed, suffer one damage. So take that stress bots and yourself. So Chopper may not be as popular, but it does help out if uh, you're worried about stress bots. Ezra, pretty cool. When attacking, if you are stressed, you may change one of your, uh, one of your focus results to a crit result. So pretty nice. Kanan. Uh, once per round, after a friendly ship at range 1 or 2 uh, executes a white maneuver, you may remove one stress token from that ship. So we see this, the, this combo starting to work out where you're pulling stress off of people and doing some other fun, helpful stuff. So uh, that's Kanan. Sabine, uh, Rebel Only, your upgrade bar gains the uh, mine upgrade icon, which is why you have the, the mines. <laughs> if you noticed that earlier, none of the ships had that. Uh, once per round, before a friendly bomb token is removed, uh, choose one enemy ship at range one of that token. That ship suffers one damage. Notice it doesn't say anything about um, causing the bomb to go away or anything like that. You just take a one point of damage if you're within range one of that mine token. So pretty cool, that bomb token. Hera, again, I think she's one of the standout cards uh, for this set. You can reveal and execute red maneuvers even while you are stressed. Bum, bum, bum. You still get the stress, but so basically you can stick her on any any other card, any other uh, ship that has a passenger slot, and just pretty much do what you want. You don't get to do your action, but you can still execute red maneuvers while stressed. So very cool. And then Zeb, uh, enemy ships inside your firing arc that you are touching are not considered to be touching when either you or they activate during the combat phase. So you could shoot at each other <laughs> again. If we think about that, if you combine Zeb with Chopper, uh, you can give the enemy a stress token 
and shoot at them when you're touching them. So, and it's pretty good. You're shooting four. You actually be shooting five dice, five primary dice at somebody you're touching. So, if you see a Zeb chopper coming at you combo, do not touch them. Stay out of range one. They will be bad. Uncle Bad touches in town. So, pretty cool stuff. But that's that's you know that's pretty much it for the uh, the Ghost and Phantom expansion pack. Uh, that's it for the Wave A ships. Happy Star Wars Rebels Day, everybody. This is, just, this is just awesome stuff. Can't wait to see these guys in game on the table. So, matter of fact, I'm going to go do that right now. Time to go throw some dice. Hope you enjoy these unboxings. I'm Adam here from Bell Hustle signing off. I'm going to go play some X-Wing right now. Have a good one.